Hello. Page two of surface area notes. So I kind of wanted you guys to maybe try this on your own, but it is a tough one. Um, I'm going to turn this light on. Now that we've gone over our nets and what these look like when we unfold them, that really is the best way to, to look at this. So I want to start by out to the side drawing the net of this triangular prism. So the shape name is triangular prism. And I know this is the second one of these we've done. However, they tend to be the most confusing for everyone. They're just so difficult. So with the triangular prism and to draw it, if you guys were really paying attention with the nets and stuff, I'm going to do, come out to the side and do a triangle up top. Now, as you know, it does not have to be perfect. Right underneath that, I'm going to draw a rectangle, which would be this bottom right here. And I can already see the dimensions. Look, it's 18 by 8. And then underneath that, I'm just going to draw another triangle. Not perfect. They don't let me teach art, you guys. Then out to the side of my middle rectangle, I'm going to draw another one. I'm going to do the same thing on the left side. All right, there we go. Now, one of the hardest parts is labeling it. And, you know, if you're paying attention, you saw me go, hey, look, this bottom rectangle is 18 by 8. So I've got 18 here and eight here which is also the base of my triangle so i vote let's just go ahead and label the triangles as well the height of the triangle is six foot now i'm not going to put like my feet on this <laughs> my feet on this i'm not going to label the uh, measurements on this i'm just going to label it with numbers so bottom rectangle 18 by 8 now here's the hard part I can already tell that this triangle is an isosceles triangle. Do you see how this is seven right here? I'm looking for this guy here. His dimension is written way over here. And since two sides of this triangle are the same, it is isosceles, which tells us that these two rectangles are going to be the same dimension. They are going to both be seven by 18. That's the hardest part. Identifying where these dimensions go, what they go with, that really, really is the hardest part. Now, if you've still got your colors and you want to just go to town on this, these two right here are the same color. Pulling out those same color pencils from the other day. Oh, yeah. So, how about we just find the area of the triangle first, because they're the hardest part. So, the formula for area of a triangle, again, base times height divided by 2. Base is 8, height is 6. Product of 8 and 6 divided by 2. The product of 8 and 6 is 48. Mm -hmm. Then we need to take half of that. I'm going to choose a different color just because this color is kind of looking, I don't know. So blah. Half of 48 is 24. And since the triangle down here, they're both the bases. They are identical. They're congruent. He is also going to be 24. I'm just going to go ahead and write it right there. Now let's just get to work on our rectangles. The middle rectangle is 18 by 8. So base times height. And the product of 18 and 8 is 144. If you can hear that knock, that is probably my sister-in-law knocking on my door. And she's about to probably interrupt this video. This rectangle off to the right is an 18 by 7. And the product of 18 and 7 is 126. And since the rectangle on the left is congruent to the one on the right, it is also an 18 by 7. The product of 18 and 7 is 126. 
I was wrong. It was not my sister-in-law. It was my niece, mm-hmm. Rachel, who was busted in with two boxes of Cheez-Its. I do like me some Cheez-Its. So now that we found the area of each one of those, we are going to add them all up to get the final surface area of our shape. So 126 plus 126. Then we're going to add 144, 24, and 24. When you add all that up, you should get 444 feet squared. And that is the total surface area. All right, so let's go ahead and look at number four, and then we're done with these notes. Remember, you can pause this if you need to. On oh, number four, this shape is a rectangular prism. If you will flip back to your last page of notes where we went through and we colored these, that's what's really going to help you here. And I'm going to take my colored pencils and I'm going to go over this again. Okay, because that, that's the hardest part. If this were a box, the bottom of the box and the top of the box, and as you guys know, it's not being fully colored. It's going to drive me batty. I may indeed come back later and fix that. You know me. I will come back later and fix that. I will definitely do that. Okay, so those guys are going to be the same. And I'm just going to kind of pause on them for right now. So, I've got to find my height here. And if I keep looking, if you want to take your highlighter, that's what's really going to help you with this. I'm looking for this dimension. Well, if you move on to the right, boom, there it is. It is 9. That is the height, or you could say the length of all of these. They are all nine by whatever the next dimension is. So this guy right here is a nine by seven. I'm just going to go ahead and write that on both of these. They are both nine by seven. You guys know the product of that. That's 63. Let's go ahead and solve that and put it in there. Just like we've been doing this entire time. I'm actually really glad I have this colored pencil. It's easy to write on. Okay, so if it were a box, that would be the bottom and the top. So then, I guess we could say that this guy right here would be the front and the back of the box. They are going to be the same as well. This is going to be a little harder to identify. Um, looking at this, it's going to be a little bit harder because here, there's nothing. I see my seven. You see my seven? I know it's seven by something. I have no idea. So then I'm going to come to the other one that matches it. He is also seven because this part of the rectangle, these are the same, they're congruent. And this is two. So these are both a seven by two. And here's where people mess up and they cannot remember this. So I'm going to grab another color highlighter to show you guys. Sometimes I will refer to these guys as the little elbows they're kind of bendy they bend like an elbow they are exactly the same if this is two so is this guy i got the same thing going on over here if he's two so is this guy and the reason is because when sorry, i have a handful of pins when i fold them up they meet and they are exactly the same they are the same edge they just don't look like it when you unfold it and you can see these little elbows as i call them here and then elbows down here. Each one of these are also two. So let's go back to the front and back of the box. It's a seven by two, therefore we've got an area of 14 here and an area of 14 down here. And of course, I just marked on myself, always, always marking on myself. And then we've only got two rectangles left or two sides left and we'll literally just call them the sides. I'm cool with that. And this green is super hard to see. Surely you guys can tell that that's green. If not, these are green. <laughs> FYI. <laughs> 
So then we have, we know this is two. We just talked about that. That's a little elbow. Two by, I'm going to there it is now. Both of these are two by nine. So again, this is where the colors really come in and help you out. And you guys know I'm a huge fan of colors. And the product of two and nine is 18. So the only thing left here is to add every one of these areas up. Because to find the surface area, it is the sum of the areas of each polygon that make this up. So, I'm just going to start with the bigger one, 63. 63 plus 63. 18, 18, 14, and 14. And you guys know I would never line these up and add this way. I would always group them. But um, I will tell you a little secret. I'm using a calculator, okay? So, <laughs> the surface area, when you add them all up, is 100 and 90 and remember it's area centimeters squared so 190 centimeters squared so now what i want you guys to do is i want you to take your notebook you're going to trim up this page along with the page from the first video and i, I know this video is long and i apologize and then you are going to trim it and you're going to paste it in your notebook and this is is titled surface area page one page two going right on the back of it okay you guys got this 